as well. First of all, since we start with history, I need to complete what uh, Rodrigo told. Uh, it was a very pleasant first meeting I had with Ricardo Melchior. At that time, the former president of the Cabildo, at that time, I remember when we had a kind of, uh, how should I say, elder people exchange, because we are the same age. Uh, he said, well, I'm thinking about myself not to uh, stay at home, pour waters on flowers, etc. So if you have any good idea which brings me and my, my friends to have very interesting discussions, uh, we will support you. So there was also very egoistic interest by Ricardo, myself and other people. Then he, uh, I remember that we drove to uh, ITER, the uh, uh, national or the local uh, technology center in the south, and there we had the opportunity to meet Manuel Santa Gorta, who hopefully will be with us this afternoon, it's not confirmed yet. And this was also a very interesting first meeting for me because uh, Tenerife, from the outside view, is a country of uh, tourism, period. And maybe in consequence of tourism, it's construction, period. And I was not expecting that there is a technology center as of the quality of ITER. And the most amazing thing is what has been discussed in Tenerife in terms of uh, supercomputing uh, is more or less that, uh, first of all, we need to say that there is a supercomputer now in Tenerife Island, the second fast, fastest in uh, Spain, as much as I'm informed. And what is not known to most of the people that more or less all the transatlantic cables for high-speed data communication are ending at this island. So there's a high capacity for data communication, which is not yet used. And I think part of the strategy of the island is to attract companies and young brains, etc., to make advantage out of this uh, infrastructure situation. So let me just go for a water because I have a rough throat. <coughs> now entering a little bit uh, an introduction for what is uh, Humboldt Cosmos University and Multiversity. <laughs> Uh, it has changed since the very beginning when I met uh, Ricardo uh, and it expanded to the extent that Ricardo introduced to me his friend uh, Eduardo Pintado. Ah, does it work? Can we put it louder? Or? Sorry. <laughs> Better? Does not work. I have to speak louder, evidently. So, uh, <clears throat> Ricardo introduced to me Eduardo Pintado. Eduardo is the person, uh, consejero of the, uh, member of the government of the island, who is, uh, <coughs> as much as I know, devoted for special projects, at least at that time. <coughs> and meanwhile, I think he has expanded his uh, competences in other areas. And Eduardo was certainly the one who together with Rodrigo Trujillo, helped us most in developing the Humboldt Cosmos Multiversity. Uh, the, the, the material fact, I need to say, was that uh, the Cabildo gave us a building. So Humboldt Cosmos Multiversity is not just a virtual organization. It's also okay. manifested by a building which is in Tacoronte. It's called La Casona. <coughs> and more or less whole, the whole program of the next two weeks, but one is uh, being taking place in, in Takoronde, in this place. Now, uh, I don't want to go into the details. It's much too much text, I know. But the question was always, what is a multiversity? And you could say that uh, the thinking about the future of universities, you will find out that the role of universities, and the rector has said it before, has, uh, is about to change. It's changing to the extent that we will no more have the silos as in the past, the faculties which are devoted only to one specific area of knowledge rather than we have kind of cross-fertilizations between the faculties. <coughs> At the New Club of Paris we already started in 2008 to think about this new, the new concepts of uh, higher education. and. Uh, this has been even taken up by the uh, European Academy of Science of University Reformation. So our ideas were not just uh, singular ideas on how to change universities' uh, definitions. 
the New Club of Paris, together with the Alto University in Helsinki. That is one university which is a very interesting construct because it has been composed out of three universities, namely one for natural and technical science, second for human science and social sciences, and third, design and art. And the conviction was that uh, these three major directions in science should go together. And the New Club of Paris was more or less uh, helping to create this new concept uh, namely, in the year 2005, and the then Prime Minister of Finland, at that time Matti van Hanne, called us in for a kind of a consultation meeting. <coughs> and what he literally said, he said, well, I'm giving every Sunday some speeches on the Knowledge Society. God damn, I don't know what this is. And he wanted to know and uh, he wanted to learn about what is <coughs> Knowledge Society, what is Knowledge Economy. And one of the results of this discussion was that we found that uh, science is, is no more organized in the traditional sense in faculties rather than having cross-faculty uh, cross, uh, corporations. Uh, so the term multiversity is not very new. We found it uh, that already in 63 in uh, California there was a president of all the Californian universities uh, who had uh, uh, given the idea that universities, as he was stating it, the old idea was a village of priests, I mean, people like the professors, the, the knowledge owners who had a kind of uh, elicitarian and a very close shop uh, kind of uh, communication within the academic and intellectual community. And more or less the program he already said at that time should be that universities should open up to the society. And in recent periods, you may remember, there were also attempts to find out if even not the, the, the so-called uneducated or not higher level educated people could contribute. What I learned in Finland, in Finland they have a very high respect even towards people who have not an academic background. Finding out if their intelligence could contribute to the development of society. And I think this is part of our idea in the future also to open up and you will see that in the program uh, pointed out there in Takoronte, we will have at least two events where we go uh, for public, inviting all the citizens of uh, Tenerife and in specific of the places like Takoronte and El Salsal and uh, La Laguna, etc., in order to join uh, to our events. <coughs> As I said already, the conceptual basics, and this has been said by Rodrigo already, uh, are more or less defined by four inputs. The one input was the manifesto of the New Club of Paris, where it's uh, well described how we consider the future of the knowledge society shall develop. The second one is that uh, you may have heard uh, by the European programs that the European Commission is very much concerned about how to cope with the so-called grand challenges. Just to give you one idea, the demographic development in Europe, uh, that people get more and more older, and that there are not enough young people to compensate for, in specific in the economic dimension, or take the climate change, or take the agricultural revolutions, etc. So there are a lot of so-called grand challenges. We come back to Humboldt's uh, philosophy later on, because I may announce that Wolfredo Wildpret, as I learned, his grandfather was the founder of this faculty here. And you will find there is a little poster giving the history of uh, the family of Wildpretz. Uh, he will be with us uh, in a few minutes uh, discussing uh, a little bit more what the influence of Alexander von Humboldt was in uh, Tenerife in specific. And the question we will discuss is about how the personality of Alexander von Humboldt can be representative uh, for a future scientists also, not only in Tenerife rather than in the, in the world. <coughs> now, uh, why Tenerife? And when we came here first time, we, as I said before, we had the image, uh, imagination, it's, a, uh, it's an island of tourists. And uh, then, uh, looking around, we found out that there are a lot of interesting locations. I already was mentioning the ITER, the uh, technological centers on uh, renewable energies. And then looking around further, you find that, for example, the famous telescope area on the mountains uphill have been used by very, very exciting projects. If you read from uh, the newspapers, for example, when recently 
there was a data connection <coughs> between the moon and, and the earth using laser technology which enables very fast speed uh, communication between space locations like the moon and the earth. Uh, this has been exercised first time on Tenerife or for example quantum cr uh, cryptography, the, the modern way to protect against any kind of, uh, of spying in the network. <coughs> so NSA would have no more chance to to follow what, what, what you are uh, exchanging in your telephone line. All this has been exercised on Tenerife, but my, my feeling was when I came here that nobody uh, took notice of these type of modern, uh, of modern uh, technologies being uh, tried out on this island. And not, last but not least, as I was mentioning, that also culture and art uh, plays a certain role. The symbol for this island is the famous um, auditorio, and I also only can recommend to you to visit it, for example, I think tomorrow evening, Saturday evening, there's a small concert, not in the main hall, but anyway, you will visit that building, and I think it's the most ex exciting building. Most <coughs> of the people visiting Tenerife or Santa Cruz first time have make a reference to the, to the Australian uh, uh, Opera House. Now, uh, I already told you how the history was. At the very beginning, more or less the same people were <coughs> engaging in the foundation. It was Ricardo Melchior, first place, Eduardo Domene, the rector who has uh, been with us. A uh, friend of mine, uh, Leif Edmondson, and at this point in time, I uh, want to introduce, and this is also part of history, Boris Groth, because uh, the success of two days' event would not have been made possible if Boris would not have been with us. And there's a little bit of common history because Boris and myself for a certain period in the years 94, around 98, we together had the opportunity to develop an institute in Spain, in Bilbao, in the Basque country, which is, uh, which is still the European Software Institute. And this was one of the major ventures at that period by the European Commission and we had the opportunity to work together in order to develop a trans-European high-tech institute uh, in this place. <coughs> so you would expect me to speak a little bit better Spanish but the problem was that in this institute we day by day spoke only English and my family spoke German and my Spanish is pretty pretty poor to the extent that, that I can just command some food in the restaurants or ask for the directions in the streets, etc. Uh, okay. <coughs> so, um, just to go a little bit into what is uh, the Humboldt Cosmos Multiversity, and we have different action lines, and you can see that in this picture. Uh, in the core of our interest is to develop more and more a kind of an exclusive think tank, which, we call, which is called in the academic society an Institute of Advanced Studies. The idea behind it is to attract uh, scientists, mainly in the pension age, to stay for a certain while in such a place like Tenerife and to work on specific subjects, as I said before, which are subjects of the, great uh, the grand challenges, for example. The idea of an, advanced institute, uh, an Institute of Advanced Studies has been the first time in history developed in Princeton. This is a famous Princeton Institute, so this is the highest level you can imagine. And Princeton attracted at its time people like uh, Kurt Gödel or Albert Einstein, for example. So the idea behind this is to make use of the knowledge of elder scientists, of knowledgeable people, of big brains of our time. And if we would be able to attract them to a place like Tenerife, I think that would be the ultimate goal uh, in order to continue the line Rodrigo has already told us. Around this core we will have seminars, as you see on the list here on the poster, uh, what we call experience labs, that means that we not only uh, have presentations, frontal presentations rather than the core idea is to have workshops. Most of our uh, events are on workshop style, so people visiting these events are invited to contribute. And uh, Boris will talk about this later on, on university type courses as well as on seminars, which we would call incentive seminars, could be that in order to attract some money to the island, we also invite some companies to have some uh, events uh, organized in the framework of the Humboldt Cosmos University, because these are the events by which we can potentially finance uh, the institute beside the um, 
potential to attract money from the European programs, for example. I think for the time being it's not so much likely that Spain will spend a lot of money for such kind of programs. Okay, as I said before, there are influence takers, shareholders and supporters. You see them here on this picture. Most of them have been already mentioned. And as much as SGM is concerned, uh, Boris will talk about this later. This is the overall structure of the program, which you also see on that list. So we have the opening conference by today. This is the conference motivating, explaining a little bit what the whole program is about. And hopefully <coughs> some of you will also uh, promote their events. For example, uh, Jose Maria Vietma coming from Barcelona, he will talk about uh, knowledge economy on Monday. This will be the first event in the row of our workshops and uh, I would be happy if uh, also Jose Maria would uh, express himself in a way that a lot of uh, you would, would uh, take the decision to join on Monday the first workshop. This has been presented already. This is the overall program which you see also on that poster. Uh, a last point which I think is important at least for the students because we uh, found out that one of the problems to attend the meetings in uh, La Casona and Pacoronte is that uh, how to get there it's easy by car but it's not so easy by public transport so uh, for the students in this room if there's any need to know uh, take a bus in the direction of El Salzal and uh, there is this bus station also on this way, uh, uh, stopping close to the church Santa Catalina. Santa Catalina is a reference point where next door the La Casona is uh, arranged. Now, having given a kind of a framework uh, introduction to what the H HCM, the Humboldt Cosmos Multiversity, is, I would uh, invite the first speaker to give me his presentation. <coughs> and as much as I know, it's Boris. Are you the first one? No. No? No, I think it's... Ah, Boris. sorry. It's Maurice Boris Krech. Maurice <laughs> Krech and Vincent Mayoni uh, come from Malta, as has been introduced. And uh, I think you need a little bit of technical preparations, putting in your memory stick. And uh, the floor is yours now, please. Thank you.